Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. You know, there is a great article. It's a truly spectacular article. It's on Yahoo Sports. Let's try to shine a light on the boxing community and some of the authors out there. It's from Kevin Io, and he interviews a great promoter. And I mean a truly great promoter. I want people to understand that while I criticize promoters in general here online, and I'll even criticize this promoter, I recognize the contribution to the sport of boxing this promoter has had. And that promoter is Bob Arum. And Bob Arum comments on why his relationship with Floyd Mayweather didn't work out many years ago when Bob Arum was Floyd Mayweather's promoter. Right? Let me just read the quote. This is from Kevin Iol's piece on Yahoo Sports. I encourage you to go to the source to get the full article. The quote from Bob Arum is, The big divide between Floyd and ourselves, with me, it was really the age difference. Floyd was asking me to reach out on his behalf more to the African American community. I was familiar with the African American community, but it was a different community. It was the community of Ali and the Joe Fraser times and older people like myself. What Floyd was talking about, which I later realized was the hip hop generation, which I couldn't connect to. I didn't do what Floyd asked me to do because I didn't know how. Now this is Bob Arum being humble. Let me just make a point that needs to be made because, you know, while I love hip hop, while I agree that every generation has its signature, I'm really tired of running into folks who don't seem to understand that there was a black community and there was an identity and progressive thought and marketplace for African Americans that actually existed before BET. Right? I talk to young people and they act like Black people just now are realizing that they have market power, that the hip-hop generation is the first generation where black people have had a cultural identity, that the hip-hop generation somehow is the first generation where the African-American boxer has a self-identity and wants to relate to their community and stuff like that. Let me just say, um, <laughs> I hope folks understand that there's always been a very conscious and very vibrant African-American community, right? Before hip-hop, during hip-hop, I'm sure after hip-hop. Let me point out that there were very successful black promoters. I know a lot of people now are talking about you know, some managers in the sport, right? Al Heyman, James Prince. Just to understand, there were very prominent black promoters in the 1970s and 80s, right? Don King, you might have heard of him. Butch Lewis, if you don't know who he is, you need to figure it out, right? Understand that the black community actively supported fighters and not every fighter was very corporate, right? You know, I would argue that today's hip hop community is much more savvy in terms of marketing than the African American community I grew up in in the 1970s, right? Things were edgier then. You want to see a great ring entrance here on YouTube? Just YouTube, Larry Holmes's entrance into the ring against Jerry Cooney. There was a feeling that Larry Holmes didn't want to fight Jerry Cooney. So, I'm not kidding. Larry Holmes and his corner to Ain't No Stopping Us Now, literally, the entourage ran into the ring. Right? It was edgy. People were conscious. Right? Folks back then had an idea of not selling 
out. Right? The idea that the hip-hop generation somehow is more conscious than the African-American community in the 60s and 70s and 80s is just well off the mark. Now, what's the difference? Is really a difference in society itself, right? Back then, television was passive. You sat down and you watched TV. There was nothing to click. There were no links. I couldn't see a link and then say, oh, let me go, let me go check this out, then get to a web page and then say, oh, you know what? Let me go check this other thing out. Then go click on a further link. No, back in the 70s, you had a TV and you just sat there and you watched, right? Understand that had a profound effect on society. Right? Because since you weren't clicking links, people couldn't figure out exactly what links would have been popular, what people really wanted. Right? And because back then television just had a few channels, right? Good luck finding cable TV in the mid 1970s. Right? Because back then TV had a few channels, you didn't have the great communities that understood that they were watching material directly tailored to them. So I'll concede that in the 70s, while you had black shows, right? What's happening? That's a black show, folks, right? Countless others. Um, you know, while you had black cinema, right? What later got called black exploitation, I have no idea why, because having our own cinema industry was a positive, right? I'll concede you didn't have BET, right? You didn't have all these black videos. You didn't have, you know, really the, you know, ability to completely watch what was current and know that the advertisers on that channel were trying to tailor it to you. Right? That's the big difference, not the level of consciousness. Right? Please, know your history. Right? Not the fact that, you know, black fighters had cultural identities. Right? Understand, you know, Joe Fraser has been maligned in history. Where people say, oh, you know, Fraser Ali, Ali was the, you know, uh, current black man. Joe Fraser was the Uncle Tom and all this other stuff. You know, look at Joe Fraser's corner. He has brothers in the corner. Joe Fraser himself is from Philadelphia. Right? That's how it was. So, you know, I respect the hip-hop generation. Guys like Floyd Mayweather saying, hey, look, I want to take my marketing to the next level. Right? I want my marketing to be niche marketing. Hey, good for him. But please understand there were black men doing a lot of things in the sport of boxing and in society before BET was created. Right? Let me also say, too, that what interactivity has done is it allows people to know more about themselves and their culture. So Kobe Bryant, on a recent cable network, was talking about how he didn't realize how he was perceived. Right? Because back then you didn't have social media where you go on Twitter and, you know, you can read what people are saying about you. Right? You didn't have that back then. You couldn't connect with fans as quickly as you can now. So I'll agree. There has been an impact. No question about it. But it's a mistake to believe that Ali... Joe Fraser, Larry Holmes, George Foreman, that these guys weren't socially aware, right? That there wasn't a black community or a minority community. Let me not limit it to the black community, Latino community, right? That there weren't minority communities who were interested in, 
you know, boxing and what was happening in their community and the local fighter and the issues germane to their community and stuff like that before, right? BET and Television and all this other stuff, right? So just food for thought. So let me say this. Now it's interesting to see Mayweather. Because Mayweather is one of the older men in boxing now. And you'll notice Mayweather himself is more subdued these days than he used to be in preparing for the Manny Pacquiao fight. Right? Mayweather enters the ring against Oscar De La Hoya. Keep in mind, that's a significant moment because De La Hoya was really the prime candidate, the prime client of Bob Arums back in the day. And Floyd didn't want to be promoted like De La Hoya was being promoted, right? De La Hoya, Latino, was really being touted as, you know, let's say an American guy, right? All American, the golden boy, right? Floyd didn't want that. So when they enter the ring, right, Mayweather, different time, Mayweather is wearing right Cinco de Mayo type outfit right Mexican independence type outfit right because he wanted to kind of like show that he was fearless I'm not sure if Mayweather today would do that right Mayweather today is a little bit more staid a little bit more reserved dare I say Mayweather today is a little bit more like Oscar was back then right but make no mistake Mayweather is still socially conscious, right? Mayweather still, you know, appreciates his background, appreciates his culture. We did back in the 70s and 80s. I want people, I want people to understand that because the flip side of all of this stuff where people are saying, hey, we're the hip hop generation is some kind of idea that, you know, there's a new awakening that didn't exist in the 70s and 80s. Understand, too, before we came up with the term hip-hop generation, you had fighters like Mitch Green in the ring with Jerry Curls, right? Very proud of his black heritage, not compromising or trying to sell himself to corporate America. So just a few thoughts. I just want people to understand, as you're watching Empire and stuff like that, tame shows like Empire, right? As you're watching shows like that, just compare and contrast that show to the depiction of Ike Turner, right? Back in the day, what's love got to do with it, right? Just understand, the stuff they're throwing out today is tame compared to past generations, right? You know, the hip-hop generation, hey, I love hip-hop. You know, trust me, I was there when hip-hop started. Just understand, though, that people were conscious before hip-hop, that not every black fighter was promoted like Joe Lewis is promoted, right? That you actually have people in history who are edgier, Jack Johnson, for example, right? Who were unapologetic, who, in the words of Ken Burns, had unforgivable blackness, Right? There's been social consciousness and social identity for an awful long time. Right? Sonny Liston wasn't bowing down to anybody. Just just food for thought. Okay, so I'm kind of amazed at Bob Arum's comments. I think Bob's being classy here and stuff like that. Clearly, you know, Mayweather wanted his marketing to be more up to date, more post B E T. Right? Mayweather didn't want to come across like Oscar De La Hoya, a more corporate persona. Just understand, Fernando Vargas didn't want to come across like Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Just because De La Hoya was marketed the way he was doesn't mean every black fighter from that era was marketed that way. Right? Nor does it mean, dare I say, that top rank can't market fighters today. Right. Anyway, I know I've rambled a little bit. I know I've been incoherent even to myself in this video, but I hope you get the gist of what I'm saying, and I hope you leave your comments for me here in the comment section to this video. 
definitely take a look at Kevin Iole's piece on Yahoo Sports. It's put together better than this video. Thanks for stopping by.